Today we will see the tensile location system for stress and strain. We know that scalars of tensors of the first order. If we take a Cartesian coordinate system, there are three mutually orthogonal planes, and this is the origin. So, any physical quantity will have to be represented with reference to this Cartesian coordinate system. If we take a scalar like temperature, speed, etc. In tensor location system, they can be taken as tensors of the zeroth order. For three mutually orthogonal planes, since scalars are tensors of the zeroth order, three raised to zero will give us one. That means to describe the physical phenomena of a scalar like temperature or speed, we need to define only one quantity and that is its magnitude. Let's say a vector which is considered as a tensor of the first order. A vector requires for its complete description apart from magnitude direction as well. So we need to tell magnitude and at the same time with reference to this coordinate system that means the origin of this coordinate system in which direction that vector is pointing. Typical vectors are area, velocity. We already learned direction cosines. We also know a vector a a is a one i plus a two j plus a three k, where i j k are unit vectors in the three in the direction of three axis and magnitude as we already learned given by a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square. Whereas direction will be given by the respective direction cosines. Which means that the tensor of the first order, if we need to define that complete physical quantity, requires apart from magnitude a description of the direction as well. Whereas stresses and strains are the tensors of the second order, which means that p raised to 2 works out to be about 9, which means that some additional meaning is conveyed. Other than the magnitude and the direction, we need to also specify the kind of action that stress or stress element is called. If a stress is acting, then the kind of deformation it produces is the additional meaning that needs to be conveyed when we describe a tensor of the second order. Tensor of the second order will be 3 raised to 2, that means 9. So in all, 9 stresses can be defined. And in a tensor notation system, a vector can be represented by a single subscript, whereas stresses and strains, which are tensors of the second order, can be described by a double subscript system. For example, a stress sigma ij, where i and j are the two subscripts. 
where i varies and z varies from 1 to 3. So if we make the permutations, then total of 9 spaces can result sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sigma 3 3, sigma 2 3, sigma 3 1, sigma 1 3, 1 2. And the other three spaces which are equal are sigma 3 2, sigma 1 3, sigma 2 1. So there are about total of nine spaces. Out of these first three are the normal spaces, and the last six are the shear spaces. Normal spaces will produce a different kind of deformation as against the shear spaces. So not only in case of stresses, we need to tell the magnitude, but we also need to tell the direction and the kind of deformation it produces. In order to denote these nine stresses and the direction, we need to work out some convention system of tensor notation. So that convention system which is universally followed is that the first subscript indicates the direction of the outward normal of the plane in which that stress element acts. The first subscript indicates the direction of the outward normal of the plane in which that stress element acts. In short, it talks about the plane in which that stress element is acting. That means it is referring to a plane. If we want to denote sigma 1, one then the first subscript 1 would indicate the coordinate axis 1. So let's say 1, 2, 3 are the coordinate axis. Then first subscript 1 would indicate the direction of the outward normal of the plane in which that stress element is acting. That means it is referring to this plane. Whereas the second subscript indicates the direction of the stress element itself. Since in this particular case, both subscripts are equal or same, the stress can be denoted like this. First subscript is referring to this plane and the second subscript referring to the direction of the stress element. You can always show the equal number. So sigma 1 1 can be represented like this. Whereas sigma 2 2 can be likewise represented like this. And sigma 3 3 can be represented. In order to indicate whether the stress element is positive or negative, a further convention system is followed for which we need to first define what are the positive planes and negative planes. As we can see, there are six spaces to this cube. By convention, positive plane is the plane whose outward normal points towards the positive coordinate axis. And negative plane is the one whose outward normal points towards the negative coordinate axis. Obviously, this is a positive plane. This is a positive plane. This is a positive plane. This is a positive plane because the outward normals are pointing towards the positive coordinate axis. In order to remember it, we can always use some kind of a thumb rule. The faces which are farther away from the origin are all positive planes and the faces which are joined to the origin are all negative planes. Further, a stress element could be acting on a positive plane 
and could be pointing out towards a positive direction or could be pointing out to a negative coordinate direction. So we can work out a small multiplication rule. This is direction and this is plane. So this will be whether the stress element is positive or negative. If stress is pointing towards the positive direction of the coordinate axis and is acting on a positive plane, the stress is termed as positive. If it is acting on a negative coordinate, it is pointing towards the negative coordinate direction and is acting on a negative plane, still the stress is positive. Whereas, if the stress is acting on a positive plane and is pointing towards a negative direction, the stress element is called negative. And if the direction of the stress is positive and it is acting in on a negative plane, then the stress is called negative. If you look at this table, this is a simple multiplication rule. Positive into positive is positive, negative into negative is positive. That is positive negative. So, the same sigma 1 1, we have to represent minus sigma 1 1. This is a positive plane and if we just change the direction, now this sigma 1 1 is negative. In fact, it is compressive, it is trying to compress the two stresses. So, as we can recollect, compressive stresses were always given a negative sign. Whereas tensile stresses were given the positive sign. 